Hey, Jen Sharp here from Alpha Cycles Coaching. Welcome to another one of my yoga videos. Um, today's topic is actually what to do when you get off the bike. Chances are you've done a great job of getting on the bike and you feel really good and you got your workout and your intervals in, but more than likely you're probably tight once you get off the bike, especially if you've been doing longer rides. So today I'm going to lead you through a series of poses that will hopefully make you feel better in your body, give you a little stretching, give you a little love, um, some props that you may need, a strap, especially if you have really tight shoulders, and a sweatshirt uh, will work as well, just something that you can grab onto, and then a myofascial ball or some type of ball. It could be a tennis ball, it could be a lacrosse ball, whatever you have. Um, the reason I like these by Rad Rollers is that they have a little bit of give to them, so they're not as tight as a lacrosse ball. Anyway, if you want to go grab those things, I'll meet you back on the mat. Awesome. So we're going to start actually with the ball. So go ahead and put that down, and we're going to start on the right foot. So go ahead and put the ball directly underneath your heel, and keeping your ball of your foot down, you're actually going to just apply some pressure in and out, in and out, off and on. This should feel interesting. It shouldn't feel like you have any sharp shooting pain. If you have sharp shooting or acute pain at any point during this practice, then definitely stop. It's not worth pushing yourself through it. Good. And now that you've done that, we're going to just actually roll back and forth on the heel, on the ball. I'm sorry, the heel. I have a lot of crunchies going on right there. That's totally normal. That area of fascia is actually really thick. Good. And now I want you to roll just about an inch in front of your heel. It's so kind of right underneath before you start in the arch. We're going to come in and out of pressure. Say a total of five times. Four. Five. Good. And now we're going to bring that ball to the ball of your foot. So I actually want to be able to curl my toes around the ball. So you can kind of see right here, you can see the knuckles of my foot. Good. And going back and forth. You might have some crunchy parts there too. That's totally fine. <laughs> And now what I'd like you to do is take pressure from the ball, from the foot, ball of your foot towards the heel and then gently roll it back. Pressure from the ball to the heel, roll it back. And then maybe you find that you have a spot that's really juicy. Go ahead and stop there and breathe into it. Good. And then keep rolling. Awesome. And maybe you have another spot. Just do whatever feels good in your foot. Great. And then let's lightly scribble. So scribbling back and forth on that same on that same foot, that right side. It's also is good for challenging your balance, right? Good. Awesome. Okay. And then just stop. Come off there. There's mochi in the background. Sorry about that. Um, and just notice the difference between your two feet. Hopefully your right one is feeling pretty stinking good. And then let's go on to the left side. So starting with the heel, putting applying pressure in and out, off and on. Again, if you want to shoot for say five repetitions, that's great. You can always do more if you like, if this feels really good. Good, and then going back and forth, feeling the crunchies. Again, my the ball of my foot is planted and I'm just rotating back and forth on the heel. Good. And then I'm gonna come about an inch in front of the heel and then kind of come in and out again. And aiming for about five repetitions of off and on that area. 
This is why I like these myofascial balls is because they have a little bit more give than a lacrosse ball. But you, do, you use what you got. All right, so now we're coming to the ball of the foot. And go ahead and wrap your feet around so you can see the knuckles of that foot. Good, and going back and forth. Excellent. Awesome, and now we're going to do a rolling from the ball of the foot to the heel. Oh, yeah. My feet always get tight, especially after riding, because they're in just one position in my shoes. And although my shoes are very comfortable and I think my cleats are in the right spot, the feet can always use some love, especially since they don't really get, you don't get a lot of toe movement inside of your shoes. So this is just getting some blood flow back into the fascia of your feet. Good. And then again, if you find a good spot that's really, really super juicy, go ahead and stop there. Just breathe into it. And then roll again. Maybe you have another spot in that left foot. Good. And now do the scribble. So just some light superficial movement back and forth on that left foot. Not going super deep, but just trying to get some blood flow back to the bottom of that foot. Go ahead and step off that, come back to your right side, scribble. Good, and then back to the left. Awesome, and then step off. And just take a moment here, standing in your feet, maybe widening your toes, and just notice how good that feels. Great. So now we're actually in a, in a yoga pose. This is called Tadasana. So you want to be balanced evenly between your feet. Your hands can be by your sides. And then I just want you to roll your shoulders down your back. Often our, our, when we're on the bike and on the computer, we're hunched over like this. And so we kind of want to do some movements that reverse that. Good. So from here, you can go ahead and move your ball out of the way and grab your strap or your sweatshirt or whatever you're using. Now, maybe you have enough shoulder flexibility where this isn't a problem and you can clasp your hands, but I'm going to show it with a strap because I think that's super good. So I'm reaching back behind myself, bringing the strap maybe about, oh, I'd say about hip width. If you want to clasp your hands, you can too. So rolling my shoulders down my back. I'm going to lean forward with my feet wide. My feet are parallel to one another. And then letting my hands drop overhead. So maybe your hands are here and that's totally cool if it's really tight. And that's why we have a strap or a sweatshirt. Hi, Mochi. <laughs> and letting those Shoulders drop down, letting your head drop down. If your hamstrings are super tight, then you can give a nice bend into the knees. Good, one more deep breath in and out. Awesome. Then go ahead and release your hands down to your lower back and drop your strap down. And from here, we're going to keep our feet nice and wide. And this time, plant your right hand underneath your face and bring your left arm towards the sky, getting a nice twist. This is definitely something we don't do on the bike. Just twist our thoracic spine. Good. And maybe you can look up towards the ceiling. Great. Coming back through center. Switch to the left hand in front of your face and bring your right arm towards the sky. Good. One more breath up. Looking up towards your hand if you can. And then releasing that back down to the ground. 
Good. If your feet are super wide, go ahead and heel toe them back towards one another. And on an inhale, bring your hands to your hips and stand all the way up. Now, if you just worked out or if you're super fit, you're probably getting a head rush right now, like I am. Woo! So just pause here and let that the rush pass. Good. All right. So now we're going to come on down to our hands and knees. We're going to do a little bit of spine opening. So you want to make sure your shoulders are stacked over your elbows and your elbows are stacked over your wrists. Your hips are stacked over your knees. Good. And on an inhale, tuck your toes, dip your belly, look up. And exhale, untuck your toes, belly in towards spine, and arch your back for cat. Inhale, tuck your toes, dip your belly, look up for cow. Exhale, untuck your toes, arch your back, belly in towards spine. Good. One more of those. Inhale, up for cow, tuck your toes, dip your belly, look up. Exhale, back for cat. Untuck the toes, arch the back, belly in towards spine. Good. This time, bring your right hand towards the sky. And then exhale. Let's bring that through, threading the needle and landing on that right shoulder. It should feel pretty good. <laughs> Emoji. And if you like, you can go ahead and walk the spider, walk those fingers on the left hand forward. Maybe getting a nice stretch into your pecs. Good, and then spider walk goes left hand towards your face. And inhale your right hand back up towards the sky. Exhale, lands it back down into tabletop. Good, and then inhale your left arm towards the sky. And exhale, thread that needle coming onto that left shoulder. Spider walk those fingers forward on the right hand if you did on the left. Maybe you tent those fingers up. Just getting a nice shoulder opening and pec opening too. Not to mention a gentle twist in the thoracic spine. Good, and walk that right hand back to frame your face. Inhale, lean your left hand towards the sky. And exhale, land it back down onto the ground. Awesome. From here, we're going to actually go into a little figure four because hopefully you've been using your glutes while you've been riding. So go ahead and come down onto your back. And from here, we're going to bring our right foot onto our left knee. And if this is enough for you, great. But if you'd like a little more sensation, you can go ahead and grasp. Clasp your hands back behind your left hamstring. And maybe you can use your right elbow to leverage your right knee open a little bit more. And you could floss your left leg up and down, maybe giving some ankle circles at the top, ankle circles back in the other direction. This is like a four for one exercise. Good. And release that left leg back down to the ground. Release your right leg down to the ground. And then we're going to switch. So left ankle onto right knee. If this, again, if this is enough of a stretch for you, stay there. If you feel like you need a little more sensation, you can go ahead and clasp your hands back behind your hamstring. And then you could use your left elbow to leverage your left knee. Getting, getting into that hip a little bit more and getting into that left glute. And then if you liked the sensation of flossing 
a term I use in myofascia stuff. Flossing that right hamstring. You can flex and point the foot towards the ceiling. And then maybe once it's towards the ceiling, you do ankle circles. Three times in one direction, three times in the other. Good. And then go ahead and release that right leg down to the ground, left knee, or I'm sorry, left foot to meet it. And extend your legs long. And just feel the feel what's going on in the body right now. That should hopefully open up a little bit more. We're gonna do a couple more movements. Go ahead and bring your knees in towards your chest. And release your left leg long, keeping your right knee towards your right armpit. Good, bring your right arm out into a T or to a cactus position. And then scooch your right your knee across your body, coming into what they call a supine twist. If you want to involve your neck, you can look over your right shoulder. Only if that feels good to you. I also feel this. Not only in my in my back, like I feel like I'm a washcloth being wrung out, but I also feel this in my right glute. Maybe you do too. Good, and gently bringing that knee back towards center. Go ahead and bring both knees in towards your chest. Squeeze them, and this time release your right leg long. Left knee in towards your left armpit. Bring your left arm out to a T or to a cactus. And then gently guide your knee across your body to the right side. And if you want to involve your neck, maybe look over your left shoulder. Mochi, such a cutie. Good, and bring your knee back towards center. Go ahead and hug both knees in towards your chest again, and maybe rocking from side to side on your lumbar. Awesome. And then you can release your legs out long. Make sure your feet are away from each other, arms are away from the body, hand, palms are facing the ceiling, and go ahead and close your eyes. We're just going to take a quick little rest here, and it's totally fine if you fall asleep. Your body is thanking you, your central nervous system is thanking you for chilling, especially after Riding and pushing your body. Start to do some wrist ankle circles and some ankle circles. Just kind of getting some motion back into the body. Bring your arms overhead. If you wanted a longer Shavasana, you can certainly take it. But we're keeping that short and sweet. Bring the knees back into the chest. Go ahead and roll over to your side, using your arm to support you. Just take your pause here for a moment before you sit back up. And then using your hands to support you, gently push yourself back up to a seated position. And just notice how your body feels now, hopefully a little bit better. I highly recommend getting some water in your body now. Hydrate, hydrate, rest, recuperate, and we'll see you soon on another Alpcycles yoga video.
Thanks so much. Bye.